Hello again. We've been hearing a great deal lately about active share. In fact, it was introduced back in 2006 by Martin Kramers and Antti Pettigisto of the Yale School of Management. So what exactly is it? Here's Nick Motson from Cass Business School. Effectively, what they're saying is I have a benchmark and I'm going to measure how different my holdings are from that benchmark. So what I'm going to do for each stock that's in the benchmark, I'm going to take the difference between my holding and the benchmark holding. And I'm going to take the absolute value of that. So if I'm above or below, I'm going to take it as a positive number. I'm going to add them all together and divide by two. And by construction, I can be anywhere between zero. So if I have exactly the same holdings, my active share is zero. Or if I hold nothing that's in the benchmark and all sorts of other stuff, it will be 100%. And I'll be somewhere between that. And so it's a measure of how how much I've deviated from the benchmark. As regular viewers of Sense of Investing know only too well, the active fund management industry is under huge pressure to prove its worth. And that's why Dr. Motson believes the 2006 study is attracting so much attention. I think that what's happened is people have seized upon one particular finding that they had. And the finding that they had was that over the sample period they looked at on US funds, those funds that had highest active share actually produced alpha. So on average, the funds didn't produce alpha. They didn't outperform. Some observers have implied that active share is somehow a panacea for underperformance by active managers. But that's very misleading. Active fund management is still a zero-sum game. In fact, a negative-sum game after costs. Managers who are high conviction managers have ability and are confident in their ability will choose to take high active share. Managers who aren't will choose to track much closer to the index. So if you then start telling people, oh, we're only going to invest in high active share funds, then those managers who maybe aren't quite so skilled may also start to take high active share and the whole thing disappears. And there's another important issue here. Many investors are paying for what they assume are actively managed funds, but in fact aren't. What they've been getting is someone who's saying, oh yes, I'm an active manager. And in reality, they've been hugging the benchmark extremely closely. And that's what the Scandinavians certainly are, are, are mandating, that everybody has to disclose their active share so that you can't charge for people for something that you're not providing. But if you're paying for active, you should get active. And if you're paying for passive, you, you expect passive. And the cost difference between the two is huge. And we'll be looking in more detail at so-called closet index tracking in our next video. Goodbye.